You say you're a follower of Jesus. What do your prayers look like? Jesus teaches us how to pray and it's called the Lord's Prayer, you know? And inside the Lord's Prayer, so you know, Jesus tells you how to, how to he teaches you how to, how to live an incredible life. So he teaches you how to pray. So it's like, you have a relationship with Jesus. Okay, perfect. Well, who was Jesus praying to? He was praying to the Father. Okay, well, so you pray to the Father. Okay, and what did he pray? Father, thou art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So blessing God first. Give us today our daily bread. So just give me what I need. Everything else is abundance. May your will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. So whatever your purpose is, let it be manifested on earth. Forgive us as we forgive those that trespass against us. So God will give you in proportion to how you treat others. Hmm. Jesus teaches you how to live, teaches you how to pray. My communication with God, my communication with what I believe to be the source of divinity is the request for discernment and wisdom. When you ask God for something, he'll, he'll give it to you because he, he says he'll give it to you. Knock and it shall be answered unto you. Seek and you shall find. It's not seek and maybe you will find. Yeah. No, you will find. You may find something that you weren't looking for though. <laughs> you may ask for patience and God may give you a really hard situation that'll teach you patience. He may not give you patience automatically. Hmm. You may ask God for strength and he might put you through a really tough, tumultuous situation to help you develop strength. So God may give you what you want, but not in the form that you ask for it which is really interesting because God tends to work that way. But in the pain we're carved, in the, in the success and in the pleasure, we tend to get arrogant, we tend to get blinded. So my relationship with, with God was one where I surrendered myself to the idea of truth. I had a conversation with God once, and this is when my life changed completely. I said, God, I today surrender everything to you my relationships, my business, my money, myself, my mindset, my belief system for the pursuit of truth. If you show me truth, I promise you, I will follow it. And if you follow the truth, the truth continues to show itself to you. To whom much is given, much is required. So if God's gonna give you a lot of resources, talent, he's gonna expect a lot from that. So you have to develop into those things. And then God starts giving you things. And then you begin to read people like Solomon when he talks about Lamentations in the book of Lamentations that everything is a vanity, vanity of vanities. He has a thousand women, he has palaces, he has kingdoms, he says it's not worth it, okay? Then in the book of Ecclesiastes, he says from dust to dust, you know, you came from the dust, you will go back to the dust. The king is the same skeletal build out than the peasant, it doesn't really matter. So you begin to listen to the wisdom. And then you begin to understand the words of Jesus, where he says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So everybody says, do you believe in God? No, because Jesus doesn't say, believe and you will be free. It says, know the truth. Hmm. And what does Jesus say that he is? The way, the truth, and the life. So if he's the truth, following him will lead to freedom. So if I believe that to be true, then the job is to be a follower of Jesus. And by following Jesus, you obtain freedom. And following means following. It doesn't mean you do what you want 82% of the time and then 18% of the time, Jesus is a lucky charm that you tap into for good benevolence and luck. It doesn't work that way because God isn't a luck, a luck charm. It doesn't work that way. And then it's understanding that the rain falls on the just and the unjust. What this means is that good times and good situations and bad times and bad situations don't just happen to good or bad people. Everybody experiences pain. Everybody experiences good things in life. But inside of these experiences, your goal is to not lose yourself. People pursue money, they gain all these things, 
But what does a man gain, right? Or what does a man profit if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul in the process? Gains nothing. He lost the game. He missed the point. Yeah. He missed the point. So when I think about wisdom, I think about Jesus. I think about how he treats people. I think about how he treats women in a time where women were disdained, were thought of as property, where he talks about, you know, looking upon another woman that isn't your own. It's just as bad as adultery. Being angry at your neighbor is just as bad as murder. So he sets a completely new standard for what it means to achieve excellence. And he says, hey, you know what? You can't, you can't do it. So how do you do it? And then you begin to read what the development of the spiritual journey is. And there's something that one encounters known as the fruits of the spirit. You often hear the comment, you know, like you shall know them by their fruits or you shall know them by their actions. Actions speak louder than what? Words. Correct. So by the actions, you will see what they are. A lemon tree cannot produce apples because it, no, it would be an apple tree. So it doesn't matter how many times the lemon tree identifies as an apple tree. If it produces lemons, it's a lemon tree. So if you call yourself a Christian, it doesn't matter what you say. What does your life reflect? If you call yourself a follower of Jesus, it doesn't matter what you say. What does your life reflect? And it's all about the fruits, the results. Faith without works is dead. Talk about faith in action. But there's these fruits of the spirit. So it's just like, okay, well, you have this transformation. You're becoming a better person. You're, you're getting closer to God, which makes you, de develops you and takes out all the toxicity inside of you. And you begin to hear about what are these fruits. Fruits are, we're, we're talking about these manifestations that come out. And you have something called the fruit of the spirit. Galatians chapter five, verse 22. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, self-control. These are the things that come, that naturally are birthed, right? The good things are birthed from a relationship with God, not from forced. So when people are like, oh, you know, you have to work hard to be a good person. No, no, no. You have to be transformed, like Jesus says, and like Paul talks about in the New Testament, by the renewal of your mind. You don't, you're not transformed by going to church and listening to the pastor talk to you about what God says. No, no, no you're transformed by the renewal of your mind. So by renewing your mind, you get transformed. How do you renew your mind? Wisdom. What is wisdom? Knowledge put into practice. Concepts manifested in the three-dimensional realm into action that determines whether you took the intelligence or the knowledge and you applied it towards giving you a better outcome in life. And when you apply wisdom, then the outcome, the reverberating effect or the echo or the feedback is truth. Yeah. And you get to decipher whether something is real or not. It's called the scientific method. Science is the exploration of truth. The scientific method is what? Observation, hypothesis, thesis, analysis, testing, cross-testing, and coming down to a conclusion and then optimizing. That's what we do with truth. It's the process of the scientific method. Science is the most, one of the most spiritual things in the world. It's a combination of understanding that we're just pursuing truth. And you talk about uh, whether it's theology, whether it's <laughs> with philosophy, like what is phylos? What is philosophy? People talk, you see all these philosophy channels. Well, what is phylos? Philosophy. Phylos means wisdom. Hmm. Philosophy is the study of wisdom. How do you study wisdom? How? That needs to be discovered because if wisdom is what inclines you towards better choices in life, then the pursuit isn't to make better choices. The pursuit is to find what? Wisdom that will change you from the inside out and that manifestation and that change will reflect into a new life. Hmm. Beautifully said. Um, 